of Denmark, just 17 years of age, up against the former world. I think he's fully. I think no. he's still growing, so there's a way to go. We have to see where he finishes. But for me, the most impressive thing is his maturity. You know, yesterday, he stepped out there and he played like the experienced player against a very experienced player in the Polish player that he beat. Um, he dominated the game tactically, really, which is very impressive for someone so young. And also a player that he had lost to recently, Vacha. He's a quick learner as well. Pushed it long. Yeah, I think you put your finger on it there, Julie. That's exactly right. He's a quick learner. That's a good way of putting it. Um, he picks things up very quickly. By all accounts, he's very attentive. Got a very good attitude in training. And uh, he just plays with a great maturity for his age. Hesitation at the back of the court from Taufik Hidiat. And he really did have to work hard late yesterday evening against Wittinghus. And it's not often that you show, see Taufik Hidiat showing emotion, but he was yesterday. He was pumping himself up. On. Well, he's in a strange position at the moment, isn't he? He's had a bad run of results. I've certainly never seen him play with as little confidence as he's playing at the moment. But at the same time, one or two of the other Indonesian boys have started to put one or two results together. So even his qualification for the London Olympics is in a little bit of doubt at the moment, I would say. Yes, of course, World Championships. Taufik Hidiat was the number four seed and lost out in the to Derek Wong of Singapore. Lost in the semi-final of the recent Indonesian Grand Prix to Tommy Sugiata. And those are the sort of matches that you really would have expected a former World and Olympic champion and given the the quality of Hidiat as a player, you would have expected him to win those fairly easily. Yeah, I mean, he's clearly lost a little bit of confidence and he's in a situation that he's never been in in his career. When he's lost matches, it's, he's known why. You know, it's because he's maybe not done the physical preparation or he's not quite motivated for that particular event. But at the moment, I think he's really trying and he's losing. And that's something I think that's never happened to him, really. Oh, my goodness. A dreadful net shot from Axelson and dumped into the net by Hidiath, and that really is an indication of the lack of confidence. Of course, he's been winning tournaments, major tournaments, Hidiath, since he was such a young age. He won his first Grand Prix tournament, and remember back then there weren't Super Series events. Grand Prix were the highest level. He won his first Grand Prix event at 16 years, 11 months. Wasn't even 17, so you're right, Taufik Hidiat has always had this, it seems, natural ability to, when he put his mind to it, to be able to just win at will, which most of us don't have that that ability you work hard you know about your preparation whereas he seemed to be able to switch it on and and i think you you're absolutely right suddenly there's a crisis in confidence because it, it just hasn't happened yeah i mean and this will be an interesting match today because tafik will know exactly how axelson's feeling of what the situation victor's in you know, he's been there as a 17-year-old. Mm. Not many players, not many male players anyway, have been in situations where they're able to compete at the highest level at such a young age. So it's quite an interesting little clash here. There's not been many in the last 10 years broke through, been able to break through as teenagers, really, yeah. in the men's game. Early 20s, definitely. 
I suppose Peter Gaida was world number one when he was 20, so was Lynn Dam, but they weren't winning major titles when still teenagers. Consistently very good. Well, there's a big difference between being able to win the big tournaments and consistently do well, getting the ranking up high. This has been a very odd game so far, Ian. Very short run. I think Tafik will want to keep the tempo low if he can keep scoring points early on in the game. He doesn't want a rhythm. I don't think he'll want a, a high tempo game. I think he'll be happy to try and jog along if he can keep the lead, keep a slight lead and then look to maybe go a little bit quicker towards it. Whereas I'm sure Axelson will want a little bit more tempo in the game, a little bit more rhythm. Oh, he's pushed it long. And again, we're just not used to seeing that lovely cross slice to create the opportunity comes in. It's across the shuttle to deceive his opponent, but pushes it out. Oh, that's perfect. That's a Peter Gaida speciality, isn't it? Almost a, a double hit as he holds and flicks deep into that forehand corner. Tafik was there. I think he left it. I'm not sure he was deceived. Oh, that's good. <laughs> Pressure from the rear court. Good angle hitting down quick in behind there we see the difference he's a very confident finisher in the front court already missed one or two in this game well it's the youngster he has the advantage at the mid game interval slender advantage First just one point miss the satellite press in his type of hand yeah so stand brick far fram 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 yeah the touch get out every time so brick far brick far i come to just get away for andra, han han söker ner till attiren. Så höjt mellanspel, kan kicka att han rycker lite, håll, spela över han. Ja. Mellanspel när du rycker över han, gärn mot hans bäcken. För han är lite slö och tar. Man sätter. Kom så. Ingen kan se nånting av det här. Kan du se? Samma. Kurang lewat, banyak banget yang kurang lewat. Depannya kalau bisa duluin dulu tuh, ya. Sama sini kamu, Pek, kalau nyemes sininya dijagain ini ya. Jadi disilangin aja, kadang kalau disilangin, ya. Ya, semangat terus, Pek. Well, the body language of Taufik Hidi out there of concern to Indon Indonesian fans. But the Danish coach, I think, saying to Axelsen that he had to pressure from the front of the court and he mustn't allow Hidi to control that area because once he's pushing deep into Axelson he's in a little bit of trouble well to me Hidiat looks very nervous indeed he, he is I just wonder though whether he's just trying to keep the tempo and keep the rhythm out of the game and just trying to stay in contact to accelerate a little bit at the end try and control the physicality of the game but it was interesting from Per Henrik Kroner, the coach there, that um, he's sort of saying the game's really on the front court. If you can get control mm. of the, front court, you know, you, you you're doing well. You can't let ta leave Taffy time in the front court. And there, you can see he's stepping in there, and again, in early on the net. That's a big key.
longest rally of the match so far, I think. Oh, that is delightful. Yeah, but very noticeable again, Taffy keeping the pace, keeping the tempo low, lots of drops from the rear court. Again, it's a little shortcut rather than the quick attacking shot. And I think Taufik Hidiat really wants this one. This is a matter of pride, isn't it, against a, a 70. want to lose this, and that is making him a little bit nervous at the moment. Yeah, I think he's concentrating very much on keeping the pace out, isn't he? Mm -hmm. They're just guilty there of trying to force the play with no pace. Beginning to frustrate Axelson, isn't it? Not able to play his natural game. Yeah. He wants rhythm and Tafik's not giving in any. Keeping very much the pace off from the rear court. As you say, Axelson just a little bit frustrated there. Forced the shuttle out of the back of the court. Such a well-constructed rally by the Indonesian. Tafik possibly working on the old adage as well that big guys don't like slow drops, the deep lunges. He's making Axelson take a lot of shuttles from very deep in the front court. Those big deep lunges he's having to take will take a toll at some point. Smashing that rally. 162 miles per hour. Very wide stance for his low serve there from Axelson. Yeah, wants to force, doesn't he? Wants to put rhythm on. Wants to try and increase the pace of the game. Oh, that's clever. That's clever. He's played soft, soft, soft. Anticipated the soft shot there. Good peripheral vision. Saw him coming in. Changed the direction. Changed the pace. Oh, perfect net shot from the Dane. Shuttle hit the top of the tape and just. Over. He's done it again. Yeah, that's clever. Very clever. Using all of his experience there. Played soft into the front court a couple of times. Senses that Axelson's trying to get up the court. He's staying up the court there. Just sense the top. He's just a mega star in Indonesia. He's Telfik Hidiat, in fact, the whole of Asia. He does, it's not just his badminton, he does an awful lot of very good work off the court as well. He's building a new academy. Must be nearing complete. 
but he's also been renovating 30 courts in Bummington Courts in East Jakarta for some of the children. There's a lot of charity work as well. Good example of Axelson's play here. Takes the shuttle very early, gets up high, brings the shuttle down very steeply. It was the angle that beat Tafik there, not the power. Well, just shows how you need quality net shots in men's singles. soon as he hit it he hurt himself there because he knew that it wasn't going to go over he appears all right and again no pace on the attack just clipping the shuttle down giving Axelson no pace means he's got to actually push the shuttle over the net rather than deflected defense just made the mistake Four game points. Only needed the one. 21 16. The open game for number five seed, Taufik Hidiak. Well, having looked very, very nervous right at the start of this second round encounter, looking more relaxed towards the end of it. Former World uh, Olympic champion. Yeah. Uh. 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 Uh